Hi there, in this video today we're going to be looking at uh, a certain type of transition matrix called a Leslie matrix which is really helpful for modeling things like population growth. So I'm going to take you through this first example here that shows you how to set up a Leslie matrix and then we'll do one particular example of this. So this is a, a, a great way of um, doing something that's more realistic with uh, modeling population growth in in, in this case, we're looking at uh, maybe a species of animals. Um, here we've got juveniles, young adults, mature adults, and aged. And we've got a certain numbers here in our first thing where we've got uh, the initial numbers in the population. Um, now, if in five years' time, let's say each of these generations is five years, so juveniles to young adults, five years, young adults to mature adults, five years, etc. So we're going for a bit of a simplistic example here. Let's just say everyone moved along then we would just have these numbers here, but that's just a really simplistic kind of model to say all the aged people die, all the juveniles survive and become young adults, and we don't have any more juveniles. So that's really unrealistic. So what um, we're going to do is we're going to come up with a matrix that describes the reproduction and survival rates of each of these four different groups, and therefore be able to predict what the future population is going to be based on those probabilities. So in this example here, <clears throat> the juveniles have a 70% survival rate, but none of them reproduce, so they're not um, sexually mature yet. Young adults have an 80% survival rate and 90% uh, reproduction rate. So if you have uh, 100 juveniles, you'll get 90 newborns produced in those that five-year period. For the mature adults, the survival rate is uh, 60%. The reproduction rate is 1.3, okay, so for every 100 uh, mature adults you get 130, uh, in this case 130 babies, juveniles, and for the aged, none of the aged survive and none of the aged also reproduce. Now you can see our model's getting better here but it's still not 100%, so this is still a generalization. So let's have a look at the calculations here for how many will be, uh, of each of these groups there will be in five years time. For the juveniles we're going to have the young adults producing, uh, reproducing at a rate of 0.9 and the mature adults, all 2400 of them, reproducing at a rate of 1.3. So that leaves us with 4740 juveniles, or babies in this case. Now just a note here, sometimes these Leslie matrices uh, in real life are based on just the numbers of females because we're talking about reproduction rates. But here we've got the total numbers. So the next figure here, the young adults, how many young adults will we have? Well, that's all the juveniles that survive into young adulthood. And we're told that the survival rate for the juveniles was 0.7. So 3200 times 0.7 will be the number of young adults. Similarly for the mature adults, we had 1800 young adults, they survive at a rate of 0.8, leaving 1440. And the aged, we had our mature adults surviving at a rate of 0.6, or 60% of them leaving 1440. So these are the numbers now in this table that show us how many of each uh, different group will be in the population in five years time. Cool. Now what we want to do is put all this in matrix language. So it's called a Leslie matrix. Here's the matrix here that describes how we can get these numbers here very easily. You can see along the top here we have 0 0.9, 1.3 and 0. They are our reproduction rates. So if we take that first row there and multiply it by this column matrix which represents the initial numbers in the population, you can see how that will get us our number of juveniles. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So let's, for example, so we have uh, zero of the juveniles reproducing, 0 0.9 times 1800, that's our first group, the young adults uh, reproducing at a rate of 0 0.9. 1.3 times 2400, that is the uh, mature adults reproducing in, and then zero, none of our aged 1700 people are or animals are reproducing. So that ha that is how we get 4740 for our uh, first value there, the number of juveniles. Now, so the first row there is our reproduction rates. Now the next three rows in our Leslie matrix represent our survival rates. So how, uh, what percentage are surviving into the next generation? So here we've got 0 0.7, 70% 70 
of our juvenile survived, so 0.7 times 3200 surviving into the next generation and that goes there. So you'll see how the second row <clears throat> starts with our survival rates and it goes down in a diagonal like that, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. And if you look at that calculation you can see how each of those works to get us the correct matrix. That matrix there is called the Leslie matrix. And that's the most important thing in this video here. So you've got the reproduction rates along the top and then you have these survival rates in that diagonal starting with the first one below there. So you always, and everything else is zero. Um, so it's a special kind of transformation matrix and it helps us to work out the population numbers in this case five years, ten years or one generation, two, three generations into the future just by being able to square, cube and to the power of four that matrix, that Leslie matrix that we have. One of the common questions that you get asked for these is about controlling the population. So um, <clears throat> if you look at this Leslie matrix here, we've got uh, first year, second year, third year, fourth year and fifth year for a particular species of animal. We've got the current populations, we've got the death rate. Now remember in our Leslie matrix we need to write the survival rate, so just be careful with that one there. Um, and we've got the reproduction rate. So these are the numbers that go along the top and there they are there and then we've got our survival rates written here. So with a death rate of 30% gives us a survival rate of 70%. Okay, So that's important to make sure that we have the survival rates in our Leslie matrix. Okay, So <clears throat> using say, suitable matrix multiplication uh, we can get the total uh, population in n years time. So in this case here the generations are just one year. So if we just go this matrix times our initial numbers 2300, 2800, 3200, 1800, 700, that would give us the population numbers 2, 3, 4, 5 for the different years for uh, the next year, the next generation. Okay, so um, you can see the figures in the table there. So this suggests that if we look long term, 10 years, 11 years, 15 years, 16 years, 20 years, 21, 30, 31 years, if we compare these two numbers we'll see that this represents a 20.5% increase. This one there compared to there. So in other words, if we subtract them, divide by the original amount times by 100, we're getting around about 20.5% population growth each time. One of the questions that you might be asked to do is what percentage of the population needs to be culled in order to keep the population numbers stable so they don't spiral out of control. You can see here after 31 years we've got over 3 million of this particular animal whereas we didn't start with that nearly that many at the start. <clears throat> so what we're saying is uh, this certain percentage cull rate so we've got something we've increased it by 20.5 percent which means we times by 1.205 if you remember how to do your percentages. So in other words in order to go backwards we have to divide by 1.205 Okay, so if we've got this percentage increase, if we want to go back to our original uh, percentage, we need to divide by 1.205, and, and that gives us uh, one divided. So if this is one, represents one, the population total population, 100% or one, then going backwards, one divided by 1.205 gives us 0.83 or 83%. Okay, so to start off with, we need. 83% of that original population. 83% of the population represents a 17% decrease from the total. So in this case we need a culling rate of 17%, 1 minus 0.83, or 17% decrease, so that in the long term the numbers remain constant. And you can um, check that on your matrix. If you do the Leslie matrix to the power of 20 times by our original times by 0.83 to the 20. So in each case we're taking basically taking 17% off each year to the power of 20 and you can see that those numbers there will remain constant. 
So let's take a look at this question now about a colony of bats living in a cave. So um, we've gone in, we've looked at the populations. In this case you can see the generations are six months long. So every time we do one of these matrix multiplications we're looking at six month time period. The next generation is six months, six months, six months. Okay, um, so this is relative to the whole population and not just females. So we've got the population numbers, we've got the birth rates and the death rates. Be careful again, this is the death rates. So in other words, 50% of the bats between uh, 0 to 6 months old die. So 50% survive. 20% die in the 6 to 12 month uh, age group, which means 80% survive. So in our Leslie matrix, we need the survival rates. So the survival rates for each group is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.4, and 0. Here is our Leslie matrix. Okay, so you can see along the top there, you've got the reproduction rates, 0, 1.9, 1 1.5, and 0.7. And here is our survival rates, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and 0 0.4 along there, zeros everywhere else. There's our Leslie matrix. And you can see we can enter that in on our calculator <coughs> and do the calculations from there. So this is one time you could enter that, enter that uh, matrix in. The next question asks us, Set out a matrix to represent the subgroups within the population. So what it's talking about is just that matrix P there. So that was the total numbers of the bats in each of the different um, subgroups. Um, 0 to 6 months, 6 to 12, 12 to 18, 18 to 24. All right. Calculate the population of for each age group after 6 months, 12 months, 18 months, and 5 years. All right. So... The first calculation for six months is just multiplying these two matrices together. You can see how that's done, and that shows us the size of the population six months later. So it's just our L, our Leslie matrix times this population matrix. Now, it does ask in the question for the population for each age group, but we could also calculate the total population. I know which is really easy just by adding these together, but here's a little trick on your calculator. Once you do that, if you just multiply that matrix that you get, this one here, by 1, 1, 1, 1, this row matrix there, you can see all this will do is multiply this by this and add them all together, giving you 8,911. So that's a little trick for getting the total of all these rather than have to add them up manually. Now, especially if you've got a matrix that's, you know, 10 or 12 row, uh, rows long, it would be much easier to do this method here. Okay, continuing on. So after 12 months, we do the same thing. So it's L squared times our original matrix. There it is there. There's our individual numbers. Remember, you're talking about number of bats. So this one here, I'd write down 2,431. And doing this little trick here gives you the total number of bats. Doing it um, three times, so that'll be 18 months. So these are the numbers after 18 months. Again, round appropriately. And that's the total number. And we could keep going, okay? If it's the power of four, that's two years. Uh, and the question asks for five years. So five years is 10 six-month periods. So that's our original Leslie matrix times our so the power of 10 times our original population, here are the numbers here. And again, round appropriately, 33,513, 13,628, etc. Doing this gives us the total numbers of the bats after 10, or oh, five years, sorry, after five years. So 58,890, the total number of bats. So we're definitely increasing. Part E, what is the long-term percentage change in the total population on six monthly basis? This is where the calculator is your friend. You just keep going. Um, we could put in power of 11, power of 12. And what we're doing is we're just comparing these numbers here and seeing what the percentage increase is between this one and this one, between this one and this one. And you'll see that that percentage increase settles down to a steady rate. You might need to go a few more. So you might need to do something like L to the power of 20. Look at that number. L to the power of 21, look at that number, and then compare them, and you'll see that, that uh, long in the long term, that percentage change is settling down. In this case here, it's settling down to around about 23% each time. So <clears throat> we're looking at 72 months and 66, 
between 72 and 66 months, looking at the percentage change between these two, looking at the percentage change between, um, uh, in this case, uh, 72,000 so and 55,890. So comparing these two here, so we're just looking at the percentage growth rate sort of down the track, not right at the start, but down the track. And in each case, it's around about 23%. Now this question doesn't ask um, this, but if we wanted to know that question about the cull rate here. So if we're experiencing 23% growth, this is our calculation here, something times by 1.23 equals 1. So to reverse that 23% increase means we'd have to uh, multiply by 0.81 going backwards. Okay. In other words, that's a 19% decrease. So each, each six month period we would have to cull 19% of the bats in order to contain this 23% growth in the population.